Hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. My name is uh, my name is Alex. Lurton. I'm the head of education with Phoenix Space, and it's my my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to the announcement of the winner of the inaugural Phoenix Space Launchpad Competition uh, Launch Launchpad Academic Challenge. Okay. Uh, so just before we get started and, and before we announce the winner, I'd like to take a few moments to tell you about Phoenix Space. So we're a UK-based nonprofit focused on uh, providing high-quality STEM education based around the inspirational theme of space science to refugees and disadvantaged students in the Middle East. And the aim is to improve their life opportunities and empower them and their communities. We currently operate a mixture of online and on the ground courses at several locations in Turkey and Lebanon. And with, uh, 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 I just realized there was a video we were supposed to play. Danu, would you like to play the video before I, before I carry on talking? I do apologize. Sorry, guys, I've got a bit excited. Start talking before I should have. Danu, please. Many young people in the Middle East have had their lives disrupted by conflict, social division, poverty, and now a pandemic. To rebuild and develop their countries, communities and futures, they will need the skills and resources to thrive in modern economies. With schools closed, getting quality education is very challenging. Phoenix is an international team made up of volunteers from all across the globe and refugee teachers. Phoenix Space's unofficial educational motto is skills for today, inspiration for a lifetime. We believe that giving STEM education to these children will help them improve their material conditions in the present day, but also change their worldview via interaction with scientific thinking that hopefully will lead to long-standing changes in their lives. We aim to develop programs that will give any student in need the chance to develop scientific literacy, boost motivation to pursue further learning and ignite the hope for a better future. Sorry about that. I believe now, now is my, uh, my opportunity to, to speak. So as I, as I was saying, uh, we currently operate a mixture of online and on the ground courses at several locations in uh, in Turkey and Lebanon with additional locations planned in the uh, in the very near future. We also offer additional programs and events such as this competition to students around the world to help raise awareness of our mission and our work and we do this with the great help of a global team of volunteers. And so now you know a little bit about us and Phoenix I'd like to tell you a little bit about this competition and how this how this competition came to be. Um, so we met with Professor Urgoven, one of our senior judges, who I'm very happy to say is with us today. And we met with him in the spring of this year, and he suggested that we hold an academic competition. So we had a bit of a chat and we settled on the topic of Mars. We thought the Red Planet was, uh, because the, the Red Planet was a target of so many several, um, so many high profile space missions uh, in, the, in the last few years and planned in the future. And it no longer seemed fantastical to imagine that the young people, so, uh, so, so as those I'm speaking to right now, the, the young people of today may one, one day be the first to set foot on the Martian surface. So we held this competition to inspire these young minds around the world. So students could apply their knowledge and their research skills to solving scientific challenges, leverage their creativity, develop presentation and teamwork skills while connecting to and competing against a global community of like-minded students who have a similar interest in, in space science. So what do we ask our students to do? Well, we ask them to find first a crucial problem that needs to be solved and, and solved and overcome in establishing a, a permanent Martian settlement. And then we ask them to conceive of a solution to this problem and compare it to existing alternatives. After our first round of judging, we narrow down our contestants to 20 semi-finalist teams who were then asked to submit a revised and expanded document which we then presented to our panel of senior judges earlier this week, many of whom I'm happy to say are joining us today. The top five, uh, the top five uh, entries to make it three, uh, this remorseless attrition presented to the senior judging panel. Uh, and here we are today to see which one of them is to be crowned winner of the Phoenix Space Launchpad 
competition. So I'd like to take a take a moment now to to thank the judges and also to introduce them. And these are the people that that, that have been um, uh, that, that have been judging them in the uh, judging the entries. I think Banu, you're going to put a uh, slide up. Wonderful. So the first judge is Dr. Iona Kosmuta, uh, who is a physicist, a bioengineer, and a chemist by training and practice. And today she is a lead space entrepreneur. She is a founder and CEO of G-Space, which is a private company which offers rapid prototypes, helping a raft of other players in the space sector to design bespoke materials and components. I think the long-term vision of G-Space is to move the um, extremely polluting manufacturing off the surface of the Earth entirely and into Earth's orbit through specially designed and equipped free-flying manufacturing units, space factories, if you will. Dr. Kosmuta also founded the Nexus Working Group on Outer Space to support the next generation of space pioneers in areas of sustainable finance, technology, science, education, culture, as well as governance across the universe. And our next judge is Jackie Bao, I believe. Banner, could you change the slide? Wonderful. Jackie Bao is a senior teaching fellow for quality, diversity, outreach, and public engagement at Imperial College London, and an honorary fellow of the University of Liverpool's underrepresented groups in STEM, um, using methods of informal science, learning, and education, and effective ways of communicating science, uh, science to the public. She holds a PhD in theoretical physics from the University of Liverpool, and she is an aspiring astronaut hoping to follow in the footsteps of Britain's two previous astronauts, Helen Sharman, as well as Tim Teak more recently. Thirdly, we have Dr. Rana, a professor, I do apologize, Professor Rana Dajani, who is a microbiologist and professor of biology at the Hashemite University in Jordan. She is currently the 29 to, 2019 to 20, 2021, uh, Zuzana Sim, Simoniova, Sem, I can't pronounce that, sorry, Smemlikova, visiting scholar at the Jepson School of Leadership Studies at the University of Richmond and the president of the Society for the Advancement of Science and Technology in the Arab World, SASTA. She is also the founder of We Love, Re uh, we Love Reading, which is a program that aims to foster the love of reading among youth all over the world. She is also a member of the Catalyst 2030 uh, initiative. She holds a PhD in cellular and molecular biology from the University of Iowa, and she's a Fulbright Scholar alumnus, alumna. Recently, I was I was very, very lucky to host uh, Professor Jajani for a virtual conversation on the subject of education and development uh, with Phoenix Space, and I'm really happy to continue to work with her. Next, we have another, another imperialist, Dr. Simon Foster, who's a space scientist and public engagement and outreach specialist based in the physics department at Imperial College London. His scientific research looks at long-term variations in the sun's energy output and how these variations impact, and, uh, impact the Earth's climate. He's also a TV presenter, script writer, and a demonstration developer, and has worked on numerous shows for the BBC, Sky One, Channel 4, Science and Discovery channels. He holds a PhD in solar terrestrial physics from the University of Southampton, um, there was quite a nice, nice little moment that happened during the during the, the the final judges, where where Dr. Foster was in fact recognised by one of our contestants, and he was asked if he was the one on uh, on, on on television. Um, so his his fame precedes him clearly. And next we have Dr. T. H. Cohen. So who is a professor of environmental sustainability and justice at the Patel College for Global Solutions at the University of South Florida. Cohane is a co-founder and president of Soda Cities, a nonprofit environmental organization that uses the train of trainer models to teach members of impoverished urban and rural communities around the world how to produce housing, food, biodigesters, all with the goal of eliminating waste. Through National Geographic and Cengage Learning, Dr. Cohen, uh, Dr. Cohen conducts hands-on workshops all over the world, including to the National Science Teachers Association, whom he represents at the Biosphere 2 
in Arizona as a model for home biospherics. And lastly, who I've already mentioned a little bit as the as the the progenitor of this of this competition, uh, we have Professor Urga Ben, who is an aerospace engineer and a nuclear engineer. He's currently working as a senior professor of aerospace engineering and conducting research related to interstellar travel and utilization of nuclear energy for space missions and space habitats. His PhD is in aerospace engineering. Professor Gavin, as shown today, dedicates much of his time to fostering the next generation of talented young people, and he is serving uh, serving on the advisory council, sorry, as an advisory council member to the United Nations Center for Space Science and Space Technology Education in the Asia Pacific region. The member of the uh, he's also a member of the Academic Council on United Nations Systems and member of the European Association for International Education, as well as a Phoenix Space Senior Advisor, and of course, avid supporter uh so now i'm just going to uh we're going to to play a video that introduces all the teams this might probably the first time that all the teams actually become aware of their their competition so i will i will be quiet now we'll play the video uh hello uh good morning good afternoon or perhaps good evening uh for all of you all of you watching it's my privilege and delight to be able to introduce the five possible winners for the inaugural Phoenix Space Launchpad competition. We've had entries from all over the world. We've whittled them down from well over 100 into 20 that made it through to the final. And then these five finalists presented earlier this week to a panel of experts who pulled no punches and who grilled them all pretty seriously. And today we are here to find out who is the winner. I mean, I already know, but uh, you're going to find out. Okay. So before I do that, we're going to introduce the teams themselves. So this team is the Ecstatic Paradox. They're from Nepal, uh, and the title of their uh, their submission is Fungi: The Supreme Resource on the development of fungi-based ecosystem and sustainable Martian society. Uh, there are three members of this team. There's Abhishek Khanna, Abhiskar Paudyal, and Bibas Basnat. Apologies for any mispronunciation there. I think out of all the initial entries that, that I read, and I read many, um, I think Nepal's ecstatic paradox is one of those that stood out a lot in terms of novelty. In almost all of the discussions of Martian ecosystems, popular or scientific, that I've read, um, I think the, the, the discussions of the fundamentals often revolve around plants, algae, or bacteria. So when I read, uh, when I read Ecstatic Paradox's entry about, um, about fungi, I was, I was a little bit skeptical given how little I had heard or read, and I assumed that the use of fungi was, ru was ruled out for, for some obvious but, but, but hidden, hidden reason to me. Um, but then I read their, uh, their submission uh, a lot more and I became more and more intrigued and impressed by the range of function and niches that fungi can support. Um, I think it's a really, really interesting submission. They put lots, um, the, the amount of uses they managed to extract out of, out, out of fungi and the particular species that they chose was really, really quite thorough. Uh, and I recommend everyone read it. It's very interesting. This team is known as the Lahore Grammar School Defence Team C, and the and they are from Lahore in Pakistan, and their members are Abdullah bin Faisal, Rao Hassan, and Suleiman Ahmad. And the title of their submission was "The Genesis of Life on Mars: Thermally Assisted Retrieval of Water from the Martian Subsurface." So this is one of two teams from the Lahore Grammar School Defence School in, uh, in Lahore, Pakistan, to make it through to the final, and one of four teams from that school to enter the enter the competition. Um, so well done to the uh, the LGS Defence School. Um, I think this this entry in particular is one of the most focused of all of the entries that we we receive. So this team fixed themselves just on one particular but essential topic. It was the 
retrieval of water, which is, of course, essential to life um, on the Martian surface. And they came up with a very thorough description, uh, a calculation and evaluation of a method of extraction using very, very well tested um, terrestrial techniques. So the, one, one of the things that I personally liked about this quite a lot is that often when people think of space exploration, they think of cutting edge technology, wormholes, lasers, whatever. And although space is often the place for new materials, machines, sensors, techniques that are unconstrained from terrestrial requirements, but sometimes on the contrary, what we need is we need incredibly well engineered and reliable uh, technology that's very well applied. And I think these guys did an excellent job of identifying, identifying one of these technologies. So now we have the LGS Defence Team D, also from Lahore, Pakistan. Um, so the team members are Naima Farhan, Hadia Adnan and Mishka Farhan as well. Um, and the title of their entry was Using Tardigrade Proteins to Survive Martian Climate. Um, so this is one of the teams from the LGS Defence uh, School in Pakistan to make it to the final. As I've said before, this is a great thing for the school itself. It should be very, very proud. Um, so I think this submission is probably one of the most ambitious um, that, that we, we received. It proposes to use genetic engineering to insert the proteins from a, um, a, an organism called a tardigrade into, into human beings. And tardigrades are famous for basically being indestructible and immortal to an extent. They can survive dehydration, vacuums, high temperatures, low temperatures, high radiation, um, and and they can survive basically doing nothing for, for, for decades. Um, so what LGS Defense Team D proposed was that we should try to incorporate parts of uh, the tardigrade protein into our own biology to make us more resilient on Mars. Um, so like I said, it's probably one of the most ambitious of our, of our submissions uh, though we received those that required an even greater stretch of the imagination and human capabilities than this entry, um, they were often completely impossible or just just absolutely insane, to be honest. Um, so this submission from, from the LGS Defence Team T, given the recent developments in gene modification in the last decade, no longer seems entirely impossible, uh, as it might have done a few years ago. So... The other thing to mention, not only is a core scientific idea quite compelling, but I was quite pleased to see that this team had also considered the wider effects of genetic editing and understood the role that science must play in conjunction with the rest of society. The next team is called the Entangled Pair, and they are from the east of India. Um, and the title of their, their um, sorry, their, their team members are Kalpajit Roy and Vanika Agarwal. Um, and the title of their, their submission is Power Production on Mars, Space-Based Solar Power Satellites. Um, so this, this entry is one of the most thorough and, and wide-reaching semi-final revisions that we had from any entry. I was very interested to see such a, a serious, well thought out and justified revision and improvement between your initial entry and your, your semi-final. So your initial idea was basically to receive solar radiation uh, in orbit around Mars and then beam it down to the planet. And you designed a, um, a satellite that would do that. Then you did some more thinking and you realized that the, the, the design of the satellite was not up to the task. So you didn't give up. You basically just redesigned the whole thing from scratch, and I, I had a look at the mathematics for it as well, and it was, uh, uh, you really did the maths and the calculation, and basically you forced me to do the same uh, in, in checking it. Um, so in the, in the Launchpad Challenge, the, the winner is determined not just by the, the scores acquired in the final round today, but as a weighted sum of all the stages. Um, so this was done to encourage the development of ideas at every stage. Um, and I'm really happy to see, I mean, all, all entries did this, they developed their, their ideas, but the entangled pair, they really took the time to go back and question all of their ideas and improve them. So well done, entangled pair. It was an excellent entry.
And we have, uh, we have Trans Mars, who are from, well, between Singapore and Scotland. Uh, their team members are Shasi Pininti and Nicholas Keck. And the basic idea behind behind the Trans Mars, which was is is a comprehensive solution to the Mars colony vehicle problem. So there's a lot of requirements of uh, that that a vehicle must meet on Mars. Of course, it must be able to get over the Martian surface, but it must be able to sustain life inside it. Uh, it must be able to be self-sustaining in some ways. It must be relatively easy to repair. So I think this is what the what the the entrance we're talking about when they were talking about the, the Mars vehicle problem. Basically, it's just a lot more difficult than having problems on Earth with a vehicle. There's no mechanic you can take it to. Um, so just a, just a few thoughts about it. Um, though I did read TransMars' uh, initial four-page entry when it was submitted a few months ago, um, I didn't get to mark it in the semi-finals. But a few weeks ago when I was reading the semi-final revision that was delivered, um, which is about five times as long, I could see immediately why you made it through to the finals last week. Uh, without giving too much away, it's, it, it was a very, very thorough piece of, of research and, and imagination. What I like most about TransMars' uh, submission is how you, you two didn't get carried away looking at one aspect of the transport solution. You looked at the requirements from a number of different external and internal perspectives and you tried to find the optimal solution if, if such a thing does exist. I think you've demonstrated great promise as designers and engineers uh, and we were, we were really excited to, to see that you two had, had met um, quite a while ago in, in Houston, I think, in, 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 in Texas, but you were actually working on this you know, with half the world between you. And this sort of international cooperation is, is one of the things that Phoenix Space really aims to foster. So thank you for being an excellent example of that. Before we announce the winner, I'd just like to thank you all for entering and for your, for your continued hard work. Well done, all of you, for making it to this stage. Hello, everybody. It's me. It's me again in the in the present. Um, let me just get my script up. It's just disappeared. Um, so just before before we announce the winner, there's actually somebody else. Um, who's going to be um, who's going to be announcing it? Um, and it's not going to be me. It's going to be someone much much more qualified uh, than me. Uh, so now let's get to the really fun part. So the part you've all been waiting for for so many months. This is announcing the winner. So teams, we're going to get to this very very soon. But now I need to introduce this person who's much more qualified than myself to award the winning prize. We have a very, very special guest to award this award indeed, a real life astronaut. After all, how could we have a space science uh, related competition without an astronaut being involved somewhere along the way? So announcing the winner today will be Dr. Scott Parazinski. Scott, I I'm, I'm, I'm apologize for misspelling your, your word, uh, your, your, your name in the, um, in the entrance slide, Scott. Parazinski, um, a NASA astronaut who has been on five space shuttle missions, conducted numerous spacewalks, and has a total of eight weeks in space, which by my own calculation is about 40 million kilometers, which is some pretty serious mileage. So a little bit about Scott. Um, so Scott, apologies if you've heard this, this pun uh, made before, but Scott was born in the United States in a, in a place called Little Rock, and perhaps with a home, hometown with such a name, it was predestined that Scott would one day leave the Earth's surface and explore the space around this little rock. He, uh, he grew up in Lebanon, Senegal, Iran, and Greece before returning to the States to attend college. After completing a degree in biology and then medicine, Scott joined NASA's astronaut program. Fast forward to today, and he has been inducted into the Astronauts Hall of Fame in 2016, and he is a recipient of many prestigious awards including five NASA Space Flight Medals, two NASA Distinguished Service Medals, two NASA Exceptional Service Medals, uh, the Aviation Week Laureate Award, the Antarctica Service Model, 
the National Eagle Scout uh, Association Outstanding Eagle Award and the Lowell Thomas Award for the Explorers Club. Um, Scott, I'd like to hear from you later which of these you are you, you are most proud of. Um, so Scott has a has a medical degree and and has made several contributions to the development of space medicine, both in designing uh, practical exercise machines for astronauts in orbit, um, as well as publishing academic research. Scott is now a um, uh, the CEO of a tech startup focusing on help, uh, helping achieve, uh, achieve fluid human control in three dimensions. Scott is a prolific inventor and explorer. He ventures into some of the world's most extreme environmental uh, extreme environments in the name of exploration and innovation. Scott, we are very, very privileged and very excited to have you here today. Um, and I'll be honest, I had a very hard time cutting down your biography, and I'm sure our finalists here uh, today are very are equally as impressed uh, as me. Now, over to you, Scott. Thank you so much, Alex. I can't tell you what a great honor this is for me to be with all of you and to celebrate uh, incredible innovation. Uh, it, it's, it gives me great hope for our future to, to know that young people, such as the competitors in this, uh, this inaugural uh, launch competition are out there. And, uh, you know, obviously this is such an extraordinary time to be alive when, especially in the space uh, technology uh, industry where uh, not only will uh, government astronauts uh, be able to access space, but literally uh, thousands or even tens of thousands of people uh, each year will uh, very soon have the opportunity to travel in space and, and one day to, uh, to reside on the moon or even to colonize Mars. And so I'm very excited about all of your future. Um, and as was mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about supporting you. I, I grew up uh, in my youth in West Africa, as well as uh, around the Middle East, uh, attended a grade school in, in Beirut, Lebanon, and then later high school in, in Tehran, Iran, and then also in uh, Athens, Greece. And so it's great to make this acquaintance uh, with all of you. The message I'd like to leave you with is it's so important to dare to dream big, but then to have the tenacity, the courage uh, to, to make those dreams come true. And you've already demonstrated that by taking part in this, in this competition. Um, I grew up in the shadow of the Apollo program that first sent astronauts to the moon in the late 60s, early 70s. And uh, one lesson that I wanted to share with you is, is my experience in the scouting program. In the United States, we have the highest award for Boy Scouts is called the Eagle Scout. And it's a very daunting challenge. It takes uh, several years to achieve lots of projects, lots of, we call them merit badges, service projects, many things that you have to do to, to get to that final stage to get, get the award. And, um, and so what I've learned through life is those things that mean the most to us are the things that we've had to work the hardest for. Um, and so many, Many young men in this program would give up uh, after a few months or perhaps a year or so. Um, but if you could break down that, that achievement that you want to uh, set out for, whether it's to fly in space, uh, to, to make an impact on climate change, to, uh, to impact education in, in your home countries, uh, whatever that lofty long-term goal is, if you can find ways to, to find achievable successes along the pathway to getting to where you want to be, you will get there. Uh, you will get to someplace extraordinary. It may or may not be that ultimate goal that you had set out uh, as a kid, but um, wonderful things will happen uh, throughout your life. And so the, uh, the pathway that I took uh, to become an Eagle Scout, uh, I used again to become a doctor, uh, to one day uh, to summit Mount Everest, uh, and then to become an astronaut. And so, um, don't lose sight of your, your dreams, work hard for them, um, take, take chances and extraordinary things will continue to happen uh, in your lives. You've already demonstrated through this wonderful competition, your creativity, your, your brilliance, um, you know, dare to dream big as you, as you go forward. The sky is not the limit. And so uh, before I announce the winner, let's remind everyone what the prizes actually are. The winning team is actually going to receive a $3,000 cash prize, kindly donated by Altruistic, which is a great name, um, as well as a 30-minute Q&A session with me. I look forward to, to meeting with, with you. We'll do that via live webinar in the upcoming weeks, and you'll be able to ask me whatever you wish. 
the other four finalists will each receive a thousand dollar US US dollar cash prize also donated by altruistic and all the team members uh, of each finalist team will receive a, a signed copy of my book that's called the sky below so I look forward to sharing that with each of you. And now the moment we've all been waiting for the winner three rounds of competition being scored by an esteemed panel of judges telling up all the scores. The winner of the inaugural Phoenix Space Launch Pad Challenge academic competition is, get ready for it, Ecstatic Paradox from Nepal, made up of the team of uh, Abhaskar, uh, Padyal, uh, Abhishek, Karna, and uh, Bibas uh, Basnet. So congratulations to this amazing team. Um, I don't know if you can hear the the applause uh, on the uh, on the well network here, but we are so so proud of uh, the work that you did. It's well amazing. Done, Way to go! So, by reviewing the scoring from the initial entry to your semifinal revision and your finalist presentation to the judges at, at every stage, concluded that you were clearly the winners due to a combination of thorough research, original and clear thinking strong imagination and a well thought out vision for your solution to integrate fungi is the foundation of the Martian biome to perform a wide array of functions from acting as a recycler, a food source, a construction material, an excavator, a battery, and even as a biological computer. That's, that's just brilliant. All of which is brilliantly communicated at every stage of the competition. So I also wanted to extend my sincere congratulations to all of our other finalists as well. You guys did an extraordinary job and it was a very tough competition and each of you should be very, very proud of your work. So I, I think uh, at this point I will get ready to pass this back to, uh, to Alex, but uh, Phoenix Space will be in touch with each of the team leaders to coordinate the delivery of, of your prizes. So back to you, Alex. Scott Parazinski, thank you very much again. And uh, well done, Ecstatic Paradox. Um, now, I have I have been looking at the attendees of the meeting, and I can't see that uh, Abhishek is around, but there are some other members of of the team. I'm not sure that the, the captain's here, but we'd like to invite um, uh, one of you to to speak quickly and uh, and to say a few things for for a few minutes. Um, Aviskar, would you like to uh, would you like to to stand up? Could we unmute Aviskar? Do we have him? Is he here? Ah, okay. Yep. Could we? Could we unmute uh, Aviska Banu? Is that possible, or to, or to, or to make him a co-host or something like that? Uh, hello, am I audible? Ah, there we go. Excellent. Congratulations. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you so much. I was not uh, really hoping that we'd win, but uh, gladly we won. So thank you, organizers, for uh, giving us this opportunity to share our research and thanks for all the judgment and suggestions during the interview. Uh, I'm really happy and I just texted my team as well in the group and we all are happy and really excited that we won. And it feels unreal, but it's real and <laughs> we have won. So thank you again, organizers, for having us here and letting us share our research insights throughout this competition. So thank you, Dasha. Excellent. Well, thank, thank you for for um for submitting such an excellent entry and uh, and as scott said we we will be in touch uh very very soon to to organize the delivery of all the prizes um well done well done indeed i i think i speak for every single one of the one of the judges and everybody that read your um read your entry um uh that yeah i was just very very impressed by it from from the word go okay so thank you very much, and we will be in touch very soon. Wonderful. Um, so there's just a few other things that we want to we want to talk about. Um, 
so we've actually got a special um a special announcement from professor Gaven, a member of the judging panel instigator of the launchpad challenge itself um just over to you professor Gaven. hi thank you <clears throat> first of all again congratulations to the winner uh, for their hard work and uh, i'm sure all of the judges appreciated their uh, high level of work however uh, we felt that one other team also deserves a special recognition because of the original and creativity they were able to put into their project. I believe uh, it was a, a very um, creative and very out of the box idea. And uh, uh, we all felt that science is also based on these creative and uh, out of the box ideas, these thought experiments that take the boundaries forward in science and technology so that we could have a better life, better civilization, better world. As a humanity and um, I always feel that uh, it is uh, the people who dream uh, who can make our futures a better place so we wanted to award a special um, uh, recognition uh, to the team uh, who did the tardigrade project uh, because uh, all of the judges had a very uh, lively discussion on uh, the originality and the creativity of the tardigrade project of course uh, I must say to the students that uh, it was a very original, very creative project, but of course there were some ethical issues such as splicing of the human gene with the tardigrade gene. And naturally, um, more importantly, there were also a lot of technical uh, impossibilities at this point. But as rightly Alex had said in the beginning, when he was introducing your team, what's not possible today may be possible uh, 50 years from now, 60 years from now. And I believe uh, it's uh, our responsibility as professors, judges, scientists, engineers to um, motivate and to uh, help students to uh, achieve their dreams and to dream bigger. So we want to give a special uh, recognition uh, award for the team who did the Tardigrade project. I believe it was uh, Team D, Alex, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so uh, congratulations on your originality, congratulations on your creativity. I believe um, uh, with a little bit of mentoring and a little bit of tweaking your project and may even have been the winner uh, if some of the issues had been worked out. So um, we had a discussion amongst the Phoenix Space uh, senior crew and we felt that uh, some of the judges, uh, maybe all of them, depending upon their time and availability, and of course me, will be happy to provide um, uh, mentorship and guidance to take your uh, project or maybe projects forward in the future. We'll be happy to help guide you. We'll be happy to uh, help motivate you and help you understand some of the obstacles on the path so that perhaps you become the uh, very important, very best science in the future. Uh, I always say it's the dream of stars that makes humanity uh, go forward. It's like the dynamo of mankind. So thank you for your original and creative project. We really appreciated it. And we hope that you will also enter our competition in the future again. And uh, we also hope that you will become great scientists of the future. Thank you. Back to you, Alex. Thank you very much, Professor Gaven. Um, so we've got a uh, another announcement to make, and then I, I, I will be wrapping up. Um, so Phoenix Space is very pleased to announce that we have another prize for every single one of our Launchpad ch Challenge finalist teams. Raffaele Mauro, who is a partner at the Primo Space Fund, is offering the opportunities for our finalists to pitch their ideas to him personally. This is a great way for all of these teams to hone their presentation skills, uh, while also exploring the business possibilities of their ideas. So just, a, just a, a little bit about the Primo Space Fund. So it's a seed and early stage venture capital fund. So these are the people that try and find like very, very early stage businesses and try and give it the, the money to turn them from an idea into some sort of minimal, uh, minimum product. Um, so it's an early stage venture capital fund focused on skyrocketing the potential of space technology projects developed by brilliant teams. So I just like to, uh, to wrap up the, um, the finalist event now. Um, so once all of the fi finalists, you've all worked very, very hard. Um, I'd like to thank so many people for making this competition uh, possible. Um, so firstly, thanks to Scott. I didn't really think that, that when Phoenix Space taught our first pilot course in Istanbul uh, two years ago, 
that one one day I'd, I'd have the opportunity to share a virtual stage with an astronaut. Um, I'd like to thank all of our senior judges who have, who have had the great opportunity to speak with in the, in, in the last few weeks, Professor Rana Dajani, Dr. Simon Foster, Dr. Iona Kosmuta, uh, Dr. Jackie Bell, Dr. T.H. Cohen, and especially to Professor Uga Venn for encouraging and helping us to start this competition. Uh, there were some junior judges that uh, helped me whittle this down from a large, large number of initial uh, entries. So they are Dr. Roger Stabbins, an old schoolmate of mine. Thank you. Uh, Miss Sarah Boasman, Miss uh, Ashling uh, Dignam. Um, there's just no way we could have got through that large number of initial entries uh, without your judicious scoring. So thank you. I'd of course like to thank all of our entrants without whom there would have been no competition. Uh, and I say sincerely that in most cases, it was a joy to read such a a variety of ideas and approaches from all over the world. I'd like to thank um, Altruistic for, for donating the, the funds for the cash prize, um, who can be found at altruistic.io. Um, and I don't want to go on and on, but I'd like to extend my, my thanks to the, to the rather large Phoenix Space team of volunteers at the time to make this competition a success. Uh, you all know who you are, and I'm, I'm very grateful to count you among my, my friends and colleagues. I would like to extend a special thank you to Rob Chan, um, who I think is listening on, in, on, in, on the car right now. Rob lives in California, so when I had to speak to him or when we spoke to him, he was usually up at you know, 6 a.m. routinely uh, helping us with this. Rob has been the, uh, the puppet master behind the scenes, pulling all the strings, making sure that these can happen. Um, likewise for Richard Rushing, um, doing a lot of the organization that is absolutely unseen and hopefully should be unseen if everything goes well, um, but absolutely essential. Um, so thank you, both of you, and thank you to, to, to the rest of you at Phoenix Space. Like I said, you all know who you are, and I'm very, very thankful. So for those of you in the audience, I hope you found this competition inspirational and informative and please keep an eye out on our website where we uh, we where we will publish the finalist entries. The same inspiration given by space exploration and science in this competition is something we try to pass on to all of our our students who often desperately need high quality stem education to improve their living conditions and broaden their horizons, as I said at the beginning. In the next few months months at Phoenix Space, we are going to be presenting more lectures to our students starting new young places like Malaysia. We're going to be maturing partnerships with schools, universities and other organisations. If you would like to support us in providing this high quality STEM education to the displaced and unprivileged, either financially or with your own expertise and knowledge, please visit our website at www.phoenixspace.org or contact us at info at phoenixspace.org. We've learned a lot about how to run a, uh, a competition this year. It was our first one. And we look forward to using the, the knowledge and the processes we've acquired and developed to have a bigger and better Launchpad Challenge next year. We'll probably launch it a bit earlier, uh, but I imagine the final will be around uh, the same time during uh, World Space Week. Uh, stay tuned. And... Um, uh, uh, Stay tuned and don't forget to share details as a competition to any budding space. We'll leave the last words to Professor Govern and to Dr. Scott Parazinski. Uh, and then I think we will, we will close out. Thank you all of you for, for joining and thank you everybody who has contributed. Uh, Scott, Professor Govern, please take it away. Uh, Professor, after you, sir. I'll follow your lead. Thank you. Uh, this was a very, very, very exciting event because it's not just about a competition, but it's also about bringing the future of humanity together uh, with young minds, professors, uh, distinguished personalities and astronauts like you to create a better future for all of us. Uh, I really uh, appreciate the Phoenix Space's mission to help provide STEM education to the underprivileged including immigrant students, as well as underprivileged children all across the world. And I believe uh, this competition also brings uh, every strata in the world together. There is always a saying that I always say, uh, there's a very nice French phrase that I think sums it up beautifully, which is the dream of stars. Uh, 
I believe it has been the dynamo of mankind since the beginning of the first civilization at Göbekli Tepe at 9000 BC. And uh, you, Scott, as an astronaut, had a chance to really uh, take this, the dream of stars, to actually to the stars itself. So uh, we are all envious of you, but I believe uh, your work as an astronaut, as the work of scientists, astronauts, researchers, everywhere, have uh, really uh, brought us forward. And this is a very special week because this is the World Space Week, as you, you, all of our audience is aware. October 4 is the beginning of the space age with the launch of Sputnik 1 in October 4, 1957. Therefore, every year, uh, the week starting with October 4 is celebrated as World Space Week everywhere. And uh, this was also part of the World Space Week event as well. So um, I think uh, maybe uh, it might have been a, a small part in the overall scheme of things, but I think we made a little dent in the future of space science and technology in at least motivating young minds to become scientists or maybe astronauts like yourself. So um, uh, thanks for everybody. And uh, hopefully uh, this launchpad competition will continue to bring uh, a lot of people together for the betterment of humanity. Back to you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you so much for those kind words, Professor. It's it's an honor to uh, to share the stage with you. And uh, I, I have to say, you have the coolest backdrop of, uh, of all of us here today. Um, and, and quite honestly, one of the most beautiful things we can see from space uh, is looking down at planet Earth and, and seeing the aurora uh, from space. It's It really is a God's eye perspective that I hope some of you will have an opportunity to see uh, later in life uh, your, with your own eyes. I'm, I'm leaving here today truly inspired by the, the work of uh, the young students who took part in this competition. And I'm, I'm really excited about the future of what this competition may, may hold for, for people, you know, young people around the world. Um, the, as I alluded early, uh, earlier uh, today, um, when I was speaking with you, the, the future really is bright. There, there is an incredible future for all of us in space and, and here on the ground to support the space industry. Um, and the reason that we, we go to space ultimately is not for the exploitation of space, but actually to improve life here on Earth. When we challenge ourselves to solve complex problems in extreme environments like going into space, inevitably we invent new technologies that help all of us here on Earth. If you were to walk into any operating room or intensive care unit, you would see dozens of different technologies that have their pedigree in the space program. Materials that protect firefighters uh, when they, they protect us um, come from the space program. Uh, computer science technologies that are now part of our everyday lives. So the work that you're doing, who knows one day it will actually potentially benefit millions and millions of people here on earth as well. So. I encourage you to continue to dream big. And as I said earlier, uh, to have the courage and the tenacity to make those dreams come true. Congratulations once again.